This week, a team of researchers from several different um, uh, universities and institutions have come to meet in Tumut uh, to work in a Carabos State Forest, which is a pine plantation, as part of a major data acquisition program. This is a, definitely a, a trans-Tasman collaboration in that we have uh, researchers from New Zealand, company Interpine and Scion, but we also have scientists from the teams from the University of Tasmania and myself, New South Wales DPI. This particular campaign, we're um, evaluating and assessing a series of different UAV platforms with specialist sensors and also a helicopter with a state-of-the-art VUX-1 LiDAR sensor. And we'll be um, acquiring multiple very large point data sets to see whether we can optimise um, the and process the data in order to assess at tree level, individual tree level, uh, the, the quality and quantity of each tree as a part of the resource assessment uh, through the standard infantry process. We are flying today the helicopter using a fly path flying each side from north to south and west to east and never is worth it will be 15 meters apart. So then we will see a very high density point cloud data. All the sides will be flown at 30 meters, 60 meters and 90 meters high. In the 90 meters high, we will collect as well RGB images for each site to colorate the point cloud. Then, to match all the flight data and the field data, we will allocate high reflective ground control points and reflective spheres for a center of the plot. I am going to set up the ground control point, the number of the control point that is 45, Great. The antenna is in the ground. And now we wait until we have maybe 500, and the accuracy will be until a couple of centimeters or less. Setting up these plots is important. We set up a um, hall in the middle so it can be seen from upstairs. We take bearing and distance to every tree, which is important. So the bearing is to the base of the tree, and then we take a bearing and distance to the tip of the tree because when you're looking down, we need to know where the base of the tree is and where the tip is, because quite often they are in different places. So we need to line those up. When we put the plots in, we cruise the trees, estimating sweep, branching, and diameters of forks up the stem. Using LiDAR to capture stems within the forest is gonna give us a lot better and more accurate information, especially around stems per hectare, uh, tree heights, and diameters and then when we add the VR cruising that's going to give another level of accuracy. Traditional inventory we have crews traveling out to the forest sometimes the conditions can be quite challenging especially with terrain, undergrowth and weather. Other benefits of VR cruising means that we don't have crews bashing around the forest where they may get injured so for a health and safety aspect that is a, also an improvement. We're hoping to, as part of this project, to use these data sets and bring them into a virtual reality environment so that instead of having uh, people, uh, inventory crews going into often difficult situations with, into the plantations where there's a lot of dense understory, that they'll be able to assess the trees and do their job actually in front of a screen, remotely assess the individual trees. We're using an MS50 uh, Leica theodolite based scanner. Uh, that scans um, using a distance measurer laser rather than uh, terrestrial laser scanning on a mining equipment which is a much more a high speed system so it takes about an hour to do a full dome scan of a, of a region to out to about 40 meters. It also takes a photo and generates a, uh, a photo mosaic that it uses to color the point cloud that's generated from the laser scan. If you just do a dome scan you only get one half of the tree. So to try and get a better view of the other sides of the tree we set up in three other locations and do what's called a rectangular scan. The basic goal of this is to be able to compare what the terrestrial laser scan gets to the LiDAR from an aircraft and the LiDAR from a UAV or drone. This is our UAS uh, LiDAR unit. It's uh, developed by the uh, Terra Luma group at the University of Tasmania. It's built in-house. Uh, it uses a, a Velodyne 
a VLP16 or a Velodyne Puck laser scanning unit. Uh, the cylinder down the bottom here. Uh, this is a machine vision camera that we sometimes use um, at the same time as the laser scanner. We then have um, the black box here which is a, um, a spatial dual uh, GNSS IMU unit and so it's an integrated uh, dual antenna GNSS unit so it's, it measures position as well as the orientation of the scanner. Then we have uh, our data logging unit and uh, all the control electronics and then coming up here uh, we have a dedicated GPS uh, antenna uh, for, the, um, uh, for the positioning of the system. So it's a dual antenna unit, uh, meaning that we can get very accurate heading for this system. Uh, the laser scans at about uh, 100,000 points per second. Uh, we get two returns uh, from each pulse and uh, we, uh, the, the absolute accuracy is between 5 and 10 centimeters. In the forest here we'll be flying it at 40 meters so it's a little bit over 10 meters above the canopy and that's to get a really dense point cloud like we're talking uh, over a thousand points per square meter so we'll fly it uh, at about 60 percent overlap so we get a lot of overlap between uh, the different scan lines so we optimize our chances of, of hitting the, the stems from uh, from uh, different locations so the aim is to see if we can get sufficient density and accuracy on the, on the stem strikes with this system. This is our uh, below canopy UAV, which uses a stereo camera uh, to generate a 3D model of the trees. It's black and white. Um, it's got a 100 millimeter uh, baseline which is the distance between the two cameras, so that determines what sort of range you get from it. Some possible advantages over airborne LiDAR are that by flying under the canopy we can directly measure the stems instead of having to go through the canopy. Uh, currently we're flying uh, a small drone with a thermal camera uh, which takes the temperature of the ground effectively to see if there's uh, easy to pick out the trees from the, um, the blackberries which are the primary problem with this what we're facing. This is a multi-spectral sensor, it's a four band sequoia with green, red, red edge and uh, near infrared. It has an incident light sensor so it can correct for changes in in uh, solar irradiation. Um, so we mount this on the 3DR solo as the main platform uh, but there is a mount for the, uh, the Phantom 4 as well so you can fly RGB and, um, and multi-spectral at the same time. So it's basically a trial to, uh, to work out if the, the spectral information helps to, uh, to map blackberries. Okay so now we're flying over the blackberries with a uh, visible sensor on the, the Phantom 4 Pro drone um, this will help us see if the thermal was any good because we can look for the blackberries with the uh, visible. That's quite an exciting campaign and uh, we're looking forward to seeing, uh, viewing the millions of points and then trying to process them. Thanks.